Hi, my name is Willix, and this is episode two of OmniFactory. Well, today we're going to start off by talking a little bit about some of the changes that have been made through the recent versions of the pack. I'm going to go into three tips for you right away. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the mining I did. I used caving to do it. Then we'll get, do some um, crafting to move forward in progression. And uh, towards the end of the episode, we're going to get into the things I talked about in the title, uh, where to find early glowstone for a feral flare lantern, and uh, using a minecart network to search, search for uh, hard-to-find ores like lithium. But I want some of the things that I'm going to be crafting when I go to do that, so we'll save that till the end. So let's get started here. Um, in recent versions, they got rid of the dank null, so if you're watching other people's videos, that's no longer around. A little while back, they got rid of something called the Ascension Needle. You would prick yourself with the Ascension Needle, and uh, you would get essences, and you could turn those into ores and things along those lines. The uh, Now, I suspect that's what they expected you to use if you were playing straight on a sky block. As far as I can see now, there's nothing in this pack that allows you to play solely on a sky block that you've got to come back and do your mining in the regular world. Let me know if there's something I'm missing here. I know you could go for deep mob learning, but you still need some ores to get started and things, but all the same. Okay, one other thing I want to add in. When I was making this um, seed for this pack, I, I'm using Willux right now, by the way. But I also tried Willux 1, Willux 2, Willux 3, Willux 4, etc. Up to about 6, I think. I was deliberately looking for a village that had an atomic reconstructor. And there weren't any. So I looked in the configs, and sure enough, that type of building will not spawn in this pack. So no, you can't jump through uh, progression really fast and get yourself an atomic reconstructor that way. So let's get started with the tips here. First off, uh, this one was suggested by uh, Mo512 in the comments, that if you take your uh, hammer and you hold shift, see how it's doing just the one block? It breaks just the one block instead of the three by three. So that's a handy thing to know. Now the next tip, I wish I'd known it for the first episode. I would have used it. I would have used it. Now, if you remember, I made the uh, this at wrought iron axe here. But you've got to get up, get iron. You got to do a bunch of things to get up to uh, to that level. But there's a simpler one from a different mod, and I'll show you an example of it over here. Now you can do it with uh, wood planks instead if you want. I'm just I'm using stone ones right now because stone costs me nothing, and so we'll get. Uh, why does it keep doing that? We'll get two of those, and if we hit this, it works much the same way. But notice it didn't go around the corner like the uh, other one would. Whoops! That was. I used the same one. There we go. need to make a magnet. We'll do that sometime soon. I think that might be a quest. But anyways, oh, and uh, when I'm through with them, I just trash the these things because they cost nothing. All right, and I did set up some drawers. Oh, and I'll plant my uh, saplings later. I don't need to do it right away. I've got plenty of wood. All right, next up, I have a whole bunch of or these things that are nearly worn out. And it costs six diamonds to make a new one. But if you take an anvil and put it there, put this in there, notice that's almost completely repairing it. Uh, if you only put in one, it repairs it less two, three, 
and it cost me three levels to do it. And now I've got an almost completely repaired uh, hammer. And I can use that to do more mining. Uh, the way I got my anvil is I went over to those buildings over there. Uh, there's two of them joined together. I searched through some of the chests there, grabbed an anvil, grabbed a brewing stand. You always want the brewing stands because uh, you get blaze rods from them. And I got this stuff there. I'm going to do some more of that. I don't think I need to do that all on uh, camera for you. All right. So I did a whole pile of, uh, over here, um, mining off camera. And at first I thought I was going to be cutting three by three passages down through uh, below and finding stuff that way. Then eventually I decided I was using my hammers up too quickly doing that and because I, I wasn't repairing them at that point. And I decided to try caving to see how that would work. And it's one big cave down there. It goes through various different passages and things like that. But the whole place seems to be joined by one big cave. So you can get pretty much everywhere while caving. So here I was charging through the dark, trying to move as fast as I could so that uh, the mobs would all be spawning and be behind me and stuff. And then when I did find something, oh, and it was dark. That's why I didn't do it on camera. All you would have seen was the uh, X's on the ground here, F7. Let's see those yellow X's out there. All you would have seen were red X's on the ground. I couldn't see anything else. I was doing it in the dark. So it didn't make for very good video. And I would just mark them with a journey map each time I found a new ore and keep moving on again. And then light up around uh, whenever I was doing mining because I didn't want to put torches everywhere. Now, there's a few things I change to the way I did it. One, I would have dropped down at least a few torches once in a while just so I'd know where I'd already been. That would have been a smart idea. One thing I did use, actually, that I need to show you here. Let's say I come over here and I'll hit a key. And what it did is it set a home. Here, I'll show you on this. It typed in set home to and then home. Now, the key that I hit is a G key on my G15 keyboard. So I can make macros with the G15 keyboard. You can also do it with the G13. Um, both of those are Logitech. Uh, a G13 keypad. And make macros that way. If you're looking for a software solution, my favorite one is Auto Hotkey. If somebody makes a script for just that little bit that I showed you there, which was uh, set home to some number and then home. And so what it was is I'd be ra Oh, if you make a script like that, please post it in the comments so that other people can use it. I don't need it, but other people might find it useful. So what I'd be doing is I'd be racing through, and if I started getting surrounded or too damaged by monsters, I'd hit that. I'd be back here. I'd be able to hit, you know, eat and heal up. And then I'd just have to type in home two, and it'd take me back there again, and all the mobs would be gone because I was more than 200 blocks away, so they instantly dis despawn. So it was reasonably safe, even though I was running around in the dark doing it. Now, there's two things I should have done that I didn't before I tried that, and I thought about it after the fact. One, I should have made myself a glider. There was a bunch of times when I was looking down a long way and I could have just glided through over some lava and other problems and it would have been really nice to have. The other one would have been a grappling hook rather than trying to work my way up a mountain, <laughs> underground mountain, 
Um, it'd be much easier to do it with a grappling hook, and it would have been easier to get away from mobs with a grappling hook as well. So I, I'm going to make both of those this episode, but I should have had them with me when I did it. But caving is a good way. All I was doing, I wasn't even using the scanner. I was just whatever showed up on uh, whale is, I'm looking at the ground, like, uh, you know, what type of ore am I looking at? And then I'd mark it if I found anything interesting, which most ores I found interesting, so I marked all of them. All right. Let's get on to some of this crafting stuff here. Well, actually, let's take a look at the quests. All right, so I did a few things off camera. Let's uh, get started on with those ones. All right, so we'd already done that in last episode. I made the saw blade, which uses a file and a hammer, and then use that to make a saw, and that to make a wrench. And then we come over here, and the next one, you make this with a file and a ingot, the screwdriver, two of those with, uh, that's a file again. And then uh, to make the uh, screws, you need rod iron bolts, which is a saw and the rods. And then you use a file to do it again. This is probably the most complicated one, but still we've made all the stuff here, so we're there. And then the wrought iron, the mortar. I made that. That finished off a quest. Um, doing my quest kind of in order here, so we did that one. More materials, well I just found all that stuff, so that one was easy to ding off. Dust for wires, yeah, so that's this one here. Copper dust, use the mortar. Take copper and redstone to make the, what's that called again? Red alloy dust. Iron this way. Iron and redstone get you the conductive iron. Red alloy plate. Red alloy with the hammer. The wire, you use the red alloy plate with the clippers. Or what do you call that? cutters and same with conductive iron and that made my uh, little cable thingies and that was later on actually I think well not really later on okay we can take a look at that part now all right and so next up um, these were already in here but I was using them for something else but uh, Gold plate, gold cable, copper plate, copper wire, coal dust is that with a coal. Resistor, we would take the copper wire and some paper that I'm getting from the uh, sugar cane. Glass tube, glass panels are uh, just glass like that. Vacuum tube. All straightforward stuff and the coated uh, circuit boards sticky resin and slabs wood slabs and that got us uh, this part done and then the electronic circuits down towards the end here oh no hold it well that was the electronic circuit so that's done and then actually for this I need to finish this part off so slime balls we take plant balls which sort of jumping into it here plant balls are made like this and we come over here and we stick them in a furnace actually let's do them a little quicker And that's how you make your slime balls. And I made the plant balls, the slime balls. 
then after that comes rubber sheets, which we can't even see yet. There we go. And then rubber sheets, hammer and the sap stuff. Whoops, what am I doing? Here. Uh, rubber sheets. And we've got 63 of them here, so. And that gets us to these cables here. Red alloy cable, not wire this time. So we take the red alloy wire and we combine it to get uh, red alloy cable with some of this. I don't remember how many of those I needed. Seven. That's eight. That's fine. That's completed as well. All right. So now that we're sort of finished with those things that were auto completed, we'll get on to the furnaces. So the furnaces are very straightforward stuff. Furnace with some iron around it gets us an iron furnace. I can two of them. Do the same thing for copper. Same thing for silver. Same thing for gold. Now, I could have done diamond. I have enough diamonds. That's not a problem. Why am I stopping at gold? The diamond's faster than gold. The advantage for gold is the gold one um, uses less fuel. It uses 20% less. I don't know if that's going to maintain all the way through the various different uh, updates, but that's the way it is for right now. Set that way in the configs. And I'll shove more of them in there. So they, they're both going to have this sort of a setup. And I'll use those for when I want to do something quick over here. I'll use it to make more charcoal and things like that that I just really don't care that much about. Whoops, what did I just toss up there? And to toss that up there. Oh, and the cable, we'll put it back in there so I know where it is. All right. So that took care of all our uh, furnaces up to there. Uh, the next one after that, the obsidian one, I've got to do other machines over here first before I can go there. Uh, let's come down here. So to make the uh, framing table here, actually we'll show you. To make the framing, we got to make a framing table and a frame drawer. So make the framing table. These are just uh, oak trim. And that's just a chest with some sticks. Get you the frame drawer. Then on to our grappling hook. They want an iron one. I don't know if it has to be iron or not to complete the quest. So we start that by making iron chain links. And I'm doing two sets of them, so that's going to be six of these. And then these go like that. And we get the uh, iron chains. Then we combine them with an iron pickaxe and some iron. And that makes us an iron hook. Now I know that I can make uh, higher level ones like, uh, what is it? E hook. We can make a diamond one, which uh, I think that just means we get to fire more hooks. 
Redstone one adds creative flight within defined volumes. I'm going to have to test that one out probably off camera. I'll need to get to learn what I'm dealing with. And the ender hooks, uh, I can't make that yet. So I'll have to play around with them and find out what their advantages and disadvantages are. All right. So we've done those. We're on to the glider. Remember I said I wanted the grappling hook and the glider, right? So to do that, we're going to need some of these iron rods. Then, oh, for the iron rods, we're going to need to set them up that way. That gives us scaffolding for the open glider. Then notice we've got the blank up in this corner for this one. So that's that side of the wing. Blanks up in that corner for this one. That side of the wing. So they go in like this. And we've got our hand glider. And it wants us to make an iron one. It, do, it doesn't show that as complete, even though I've been making the uh, the other ones. So we'll make an iron one here. And I think that's what I'm going to do for today on these things. So we'll uh, claim all the coins. Oh, and Endgame, I have a bunch over here for... Oh, I already claimed those, right? I claimed it, everything. Yeah, there we go. I guess i got to be on the correct page to claim them. All right, and we'll put our uh, coins all up here. Okay, so let's get on to the part that I promised you that we were going to do something uh, a li little more interesting here. Whoops. Give me a break. Oh, I'm going to need some of these. Oh, and actually leave them up here. I need these things, blank scanners. So I've got one and I need another one. I want two of those. And I don't need these to be saved in one of those because I'm not going to make very many of them. Put one in like that, we get the block scanner module. So we can have it select something specific that we're going to search for. And the other thing, which wasn't one of the quests, but I want one anyways, is a second range upgrade. Oh, I got the Ender Pearl from uh, a chest in the building beside me. So we'll add in one of those as well. And while we're over here crafting things, the other thing I'm going to craft is a minecart. Okay, so when we take this, And we open it up. We can put that in there. This is each time you add one of these things, it increases your range by 32. That uh, stupid guy, you're bothering me. Yes, I know I could make other weapons other than my hammer, but I don't know of anything I can make yet that has a attack of uh, 11. All right, so, oh damn, I meant to find it in advance so that I didn't have to search through for it. Um, Oh, I know I have some lithium. Where the hell is it? There. All 
All right, so lithium. Notice in my mining, I found a vein of it and I only found 13. So not, not a lot of it. They're tiny little veins. But if we take our block scanner uh, module and we right click on it, notice it now says lithium ore. So we're going to put that in here. Now, you deliberately, remember I talked a little bit about the reducing ranges and stuff. I decided to figure out the math and where it goes. If I were to have done it, the default way it comes is like this. And if I have, the, I'm going to read you what it says in the configs, and then you tell me if you think I did the math right or not. Some modules such as the block and OR scanners will already use a reduced radius based on this value. Specifically, the OR scanner multiplies this value by 0.25 and the block scanner multiplies it by 0.5. The range models will boost the range by half this value. And the value they have is 64. So when I calculate this out, each time you put in a range booster, it adds 32 to it. So we're starting off with 96. And if each of these multiplies it by 0.25, that gets our range down to 6. That's very short. If I take one of these out, now my range is back up to 24. But what I'm doing instead is I'm using it with the block scanner, which is only a 0.5, not a 0.25. And I'm adding another 32 in. So I'm going to have uh, 128 divided or multiplied by 0.5 brings us to 64. So I'm going to have a very good range on it when I'm using it this way. All right. So now let's get on to the two uh, main tips for this episode. And is it day or night out there? It's daytime. Okay. And I'm going to run over here and I'm going to show you part of the minecart minecart network. Oh, there's a cow. Hello, Mr. Cow. Fast cow. And we got a piece of leather. Cool. Um, I guess I don't need the F7 on. That's annoying. Okay, so see what this looks like? This is one way it looks. See over there? That's one up in the air. That's a different way that it looks where uh, you're actually rolling downhill with your uh, minecart. More cows, but we'll get them later. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways it can look. We'll use this one because it was the closest. And I uh, I put these torches in. They weren't there. This is just dark. Now when we get down here, I want you to notice there are these things in the wall. Glowstone. Now I tried hitting it with a chisel first. Uh, to change it, but still when I broke it, it still gave me less than the full. So that one was only two, for instance. I think you get like two or three out of them each time. Two again. That time I got four. So I guess it's somewhere between two and four. That time was three. Okay, so that's how you can get some early glowstone, and you can use that to make yourself a, a feral flare lantern. So I'm going to make that off camera. That's just glass. And uh, I'm going to place it back in my base. The reason I'm doing it off camera is I've got to stick around and make sure that no mobs spawn because you've got to knock down all the lights or it won't start lighting things up. And it's sort of a time consuming process. Now, we have, let's get some of the stuff off my bar so it doesn't confuse me as much. We've got our scanner. Let's say we scan down this way. No lithium there. Scan down this way. 
no lithium there. But we've got a whole minecart network down here. So I'm going to put it close to this, but not quite on it. And to get into a minecart, you right click. To get out, you press shift. We'll get back in. Now we can move forward slowly by pressing W. And off we go. Now I'm going to turn around so I face the back so I can see what's happening. And we go along for a little bit. Need to do this about every 64 blocks. And we're looking for lithium, which can be hard to find, as you can see. Whoa! Well, we actually had them spawn in front of us there. I guess we're going the other way for now. Let's see if we can find any the other way. Actually, we've probably gone over 200 blocks. I could probably turn around at this point. I don't know how you turn these things around, though. Well, let's get out and... Whoops. Stop, will you? Damn it, it's not, well, can I push it like this? Yes. Oh, but it went further than I wanted. Uh, okay, we'll right click and try this again. I've already scanned this part, so I'm not going to do the rescanning part. It had to be, had to spawn right on the tracks. It couldn't have spawned off to one side, eh? Well, it looks like it's going to be on the track again. Oh no, that's something different. Okay. See, these things come up like that. And down we go again. That's like that other thing I pointed you out in the uh, distance. And I think if you go downhill like that, they go a little faster. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to go collect that before it goes too far. Come on, give me a break. Stop moving. Now we'll come back here somewhere. Somewhere back here. And it's down there. So what we would do, we'd find out where it is. Then we aim for there. We dig down to it. See, there's very little lithium down there, right? But we dig our way down and do our mining there. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you got something worthwhile out of it. Go out there and have some fun. Thanks.